Hello Friends of the T-Woods, Shilly Dragoon, back in game. Uh, last episode we covered reading from files, today we are going to look at writing some files. So let's hop right into the code and have a look at what we did last episode. So that's the code from last episode. We are still in the method run in server under engine server server.cpp and right before the game loop starts we put our file reading code. So let's annotate that with a comment reading file foo.txt. Uh, if you didn't see the last episode where we wrote this code, make sure to check it out. Okay, and the next um, step we are going to write into file bar.txt. So we also want to do that on server start, so we just have to launch the server and it should write some file. Uh, we can essentially just copy the file reading code and adjust it. So let's copy the file handle um, because even if we want to, either if we want to write or read or append whatever, we always have to get some file handle first. But we don't want a file handle for the file foo, but for bar.txt. And also the flag shouldn't be read, but write. And that's pretty much all the adjustments we need. But we still get some error message that I want to show you guys. So if we go into build and we try to compile it, we get some error message saying redeclaration of IO internal pointer file. And as you can see, it's highlighting this part in red, so that's where we have to look closely. So this variable file has already been declared and is now being redeclared, and that's illegal and that's why it's failing. Okay, so here we are declaring a variable, but we already declared it up here. Does that make some sense? No? Wonderful. Let me deep dive into that quickly. Some basics to variables. So we uh, can create a variable, uh, call it x and assign it to 2. So declare variable x and assign it assign it to 2. Is assign uh, spelled correctly? I don't know. So the way you do it, you provide the data type. In this case, it's like an integer, the name of the variable, which is x, and then you assign it with an equals to the value of 2. We can also just do x equals uh, 2, or like 4. Let's maybe do something else. And assign variable x to value 4. And we can also only do and k, not and, int, integer k. So uh, this is only declare variable, declare uh, variable k, which is of type integer, but not assigned any value yet. So this one is called assigning, this one is called declaring, and you can also do it in one step, um, declare and assign. But what you can do is do int k again, whoops, int k again, because you can only declare it once. Uh, you can also not declare it if, um, if the data type is different, because this keyword is already occupied. Okay, so, and what is happening up here is this line is a declaration of this variable, and this line is a declaration of this variable as well. That's why it's failing. <coughs> How can we fix that? We can introduce, um, for example, a rename. So if we change that to file2, it would work. It's not too nice, so let's not do that. There's another way of doing it. We can take all of this code and wrap it inside these squiggly brackets. And then the lifetime of this variable will end down here because these blocks introduce like some uh, scope. So if I uh, open those uh, squiggly brackets and close them here, if I define a variable in here, int k, and assign it to the uh, value 2, I can use k in here and like reassign it to 7, but I can't do it outside of the block because the lifetime is inside of these um, squiggly brackets. Does that make some sense? I hope so. Um, as you can see, it's also saying identifier k is undefined because only defined in here so if we were to move it up it won't complain anymore okay that is why we can put those around and we can reuse file because file is not defined outside of this uh, of this block cool I also don't want to do that and instead of redeclaring the variable we can just assign it that's the way I want to go but all of them work fine just pick Pick your choice. I want to 
um, quickly cover some basics about scoping and variable issues. So we can just omit a type and um, reassign it, which is essentially like doing int k equals 2 and then instead of doing int k equals 4 again, we just reassign it, which is legal. Okay, so now we should successfully build and we are successfully building um, the code. Cool! So again, um, same as reading, we want to check if the file handle uh, was successfully created. Um, when you are writing a file that does not exist, it's creating the file, so that shouldn't fail. But, uh, for example, if this was a path like to uh, some folder, um, if those folders do not exist, it won't create those folders, it will just fail. And that's what we have to uh, cover, and it could also be that you have missing permissions, um, that your file system is full, stuff like that. Um, Working with files can always break uh, if you read or write, so make sure to check that if the file is null, so if it's um, used exclamation mark here, so if this value is like false or null or whatever, if it's an invalid file handle, then we want to print some error message like saying um, server uh, failed to open file bar.txt for writing. Cool. Otherwise, in the else branch, um, that code is executed. If the file was opened successfully, we want to do the actual writing code. Okay, so I can tell you it's io underscore write to write a file. <clears throat> so align all some text into the file. And as first argument, as we can see up here, we have to use some io handle, which we have. It's called file and it's defined up here and reassigned here. So we are actually using this one. And the second argument is a const void pointer to a buffer. We can also just hard code some string in here and do foo. And then we want the size of the data we are writing. So each character of a string is one byte. So we have three characters. So we want to write the size of three. Then we want to do io write new line, which only takes the file handle and what this does for us, it um, creates some new line. You could also manually do io write file and then backslash n, which is the line break new line character. And this is of size one, even though it's like two characters, but you can see it's a bit, it's a different color. Um, since the backslash uh, tells it it's some special character, it's not the letter n, it's not the letter backslash, it's like one thing that's representing the new line. And that's why it's of size one, and that would also create a new line. But this one will only work on Linux because Windows needs two bytes, and IO write line, uh, write new line covers that for us. So if you can control click that, we can see the implementation for that. If it's on Windows, it's writing those two characters. If it's on uh, not Windows, it's only writing run. And it's using f write instead of IO write, but IO write is also just a wrapper around f write. That's the T words abstraction around it. Okay, so never write your own uh, new lines, just use the write new line uh, helper function here. And at the end, always close your file. It takes a file handle again, and we're good. Okay, so let's see if that even compiles. It does. And if we run it, we are seeing fail to open file foo.txt, which is from last episode. I deleted the file that we read in last episode, so it failed to open, that's fine. But if, if it were to fail um, to write, it would say fail to write um, bar for writing, and that should come directly afterwards, uh, and it doesn't. So we don't get er any error message, we don't print any success message in here, that means it probably successfully uh, has written the file. Which means if we now look in the current directory, in the current directory we should, well, let's delete that boy, that's from previous attempt. Um, we should see a file called bar.txt, but there is none. Where did it go? If it failed to create, it should have told us. Um, if it was created, why is it not here? Okay, issue for that is, if we scroll up here, 
If you remember the storage system that I talked quickly about in the last episode, um, when we do open file, um, if we call the open file function on the, the storage class, then it goes through those paths in this order. So it first looks into the user directory, which is um, dot t words in the home directory on Linux, on Windows it's at data, and on Mac it's the library one. Um, and if it manages to open the file here, it does it there. If it fails, it goes to the next one. And what happened last episode, we created a file called foo.txt in the current directory, this one here, and it went to the user directory first and was like, hey, there's no file called foo.txt here. Then it went to the data directory and there was also no file called foo.txt. But this one, it found in the current directory, in the build directory, where we created the foo.txt. And thus it returned a file handle to this file. But this time, it goes to the user directory and it tries to open a file for writing foo.txt. There's no file called, uh, not foo, uh, bar.txt. There's no file called bar.txt yet, but that's no problem. It will just create one and open it for writing and give us a file handle of the user directory, not the current directory. That means our file is in a different directory. And it's in my home directory in TWords. And if I cat the file bar.txt, we can see our string foo here. Anyways, uh, even though it can be nice to have your stuff in the user directory, for example, if you're working with accounts, it's nice to uh, not have them in the build directory, which can be deleted regularly. Uh, if you, for example, want to like work in a different code base, if you delete your build folder to generate a new cache, something like that, it happens. It can be nice to have it in the user directory, which you usually don't nuke and um, then you have your account saved there and you don't have to worry about your current directory being uh, deleted and uh, renamed and moved and whatever. But anyways, I want to show you how you can write a file into the current directory just for educational purposes. Maybe you want to do that, maybe you want um, multiple servers running and each of them has like uh, the same file name, but they have it in the current directory and you don't want them to overwrite each other in the user directory, something like that. Okay, whatever. Anyways, we don't want to write in here anymore, so we want to write in this directory. And the way that we um, tell it which order it uses is using the storage.cfg file, which is one directory up. Um, this is your source directory, and there we have a file called um, where are you? Did I delete it again? Oh no, here, storage.cfg. Um, you can also find that like online if you go to tworlds.com, um, github.com slash tworlds slash tworlds. And that's a bit big. And down here we have the storage file. Okay, so let's create this file in the current directory so the server can find it. So we can do code storage.cfg, copy in the contents and read it really quick. So we have this nice comment here explaining how it works. Um, it tells you that you have these three directories and where they are located. Quickly skimmed over it already. So user directory is the one where it's currently prioritizing um, the writing. As you can see, the first one is special. Um, where does it say it? The top entry also defines the safe path where all data are stored. So um, as you can see down here, this is just comments, but this is the actual configuration. Down here, the user directory is the first one and the first one is being used for saving. Okay, so we if we don't want to save our data into the user directory, but into the current directory, we can just move the current directory up, bam. And then it will write all data into the current directory, also like your demo files, your settings, screenshots, etc. Okay, cool. Let's give that a try. That should already work since we have a storage.cfg file in the current directory where the server is running from. And then it will look at it and reorder its uh, prioritization for the um, path. So let's run the server. And if we scroll up, 
we can see now um, that it has the current directory in front of the user directory, which used to be the other way around because it picked it up from the storage.cfg file. Interesting. Still failing to open the foo, still not failing to write the bar. Okay, so if we now um, ls, we can see we have a bar.txt file here in the in the current directory, bar.txt. Cool, huh? Um, right, and the contents of it is full. So pretty much the same as before, but now in a different directory. Cool, cool, cool. So that's how the storage stuff works. We can also do add path um, as described down here and provide some relative folder, uh, for example, my mod. And then we definitely have to create that folder. So um, go into File Explorer and create a new folder, call it my mod. And if we now run the server and close it again, we can see my mod is now being filled with all the tools data. It has been uh, writing all the stuff in here. Also our bar.txt file. Cool. So good so far. Um, so I want to show you one more thing and that is how you write numbers. Let's say we have a variable and it is called x and we have the number 64 in here. If you now want to do io write, um, then we pass in the file handle and then x and yeah, how many bytes is that? That's where it gets tricky already. Let's say it's two characters, so we write two bytes. Uh, it's not really characters though, so um, as you can see, it's already underlining the x and it's saying argument of type int is incompatible with parameter of type const void pointer. So this is um, not a pointer to get the address of a variable, we dereference it with the ampersand and then it's like basically a pointer, so to say. So then the error message goes away and if we now were to build that, run the server and have a look in our um, bar file. Whoa unable to display bar so you can see it's already very confused if you try to open it um yeah so we kind of broke the file that's bad so that didn't really work um and the issue is it expects some like string that we are writing in there and we give it a number so that's not really working some workaround that i found i hope it's not like too broken but it worked so far so good for me uh, is like creating a uh, character buffer and um, giving it enough size, like six, 16 characters. And then we can just string format a buff, size of a buff. And then we use the um, percentage D, so it expects a number, we put in the X, and that will essentially take the um, value of x, so the 64, and transform it to a string and save that in the variable a buff. And now we can put a buff in here, which is then a string representing the number. So it's uh, 64 as actual number versus 64 in quotes, like as a string. And then um, we know it's like two characters long, so the two works, but if you were to take user input and maybe the number is uh, two digits or three digits or one digit, you kind of want to know how long the string is, you can use some function that's called string underscore length and provide a buff to it, which then will go character by character until it finds a null byte, which is representing the end of the string returns the length of a zero terminated string, right? So as you remember, a buff, the array representing the string is in the following format. So we can receive the individual elements out of an array using these uh, square brackets. So the first element out of the array a buff is the character six, because we take this number, we put it inside of this uh, format specifier which turns it into the string 
So the number 64 gets turned into the string and then the first letter of the string is the 6. So the first index out of the array above is a 6. The second index, note that it's 1 and 0, not 1 and 2 because we start counting from 0 in coding. The second index being the 4, which is this 4. And we also have a third index, um, which then is the null byte. Um, terminating the string. So even though we kind of have space for 16 characters here, we only need two and to tell it that we have finished and the string is only of the length two, we terminate it using a null byte. And that's already done by the string formatter. So the string format function um, replaces this percentage d with this integer and then terminates it with a null byte. So then when we iterate over the string in the string length um, function, we find this null byte and we see, aha, uh -huh, it's of length two because we iterated two times and then we hit a null byte. And this should successfully write the number 64 in there. So if we now compile that, run the server, and look into the my mod folder, into the bar file, we can see we have 64 and then foo. It's maybe a bit small. It's 64 followed by foo. If we want to split the, the lines, we can just put a right new line in between here. Um, yeah, I guess you get you get the point. The uh, what? Run it. Now you have it in uh, two different lines. Okay, that's how you write strings and numbers into files, how you determine the output directory where you write all your files to. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it for today's episode.